Looks like we have a few people in the session already. Thanks for joining. Maybe a quick, a quick sound check. Always good to do a sanity check. If anybody wants to let me know if they can hear me all right, that would be much appreciated. Patrick from Smart Bear, top of the class, straight in with the response. Good to good to see it. Loud and clear, Arvid. Thanks so much. I think we're we're probably all familiar with the working remotely and the the joys of your home internet connection versus the office internet connection over the last few months. So always good to do a, a last check. So it's 1.46 on my side. So we'll get started in about four or five minutes. We'll, we'll jump straight in, but I'll start sharing my screen in just a second. And hopefully you all should be able to see that too. But if not, same as before, let me know. Put something into the chat and we will see what we can do. So you should all be able to see title slide there, how to save your APIs from doom. Very ominous sounding. But let me know if anybody can't see that. You should see my cursor moving around there as well. And if everybody can see that, then the tech check is complete. Patrick, again, two for two. Well done. All right, thanks everyone for the help there. We'll get started in just a few minutes. How's it going, everybody who's just joined? Thanks for hopping on board. Good to see a few people here. These sessions are always better with a bit of a, a bit of an audience, much nicer than than talking to myself in the kitchen of my apartment, like I've been doing for the last eight or nine months. So good to have some company. And we'll be getting started in just just a minute. All right, so we're at 10 to two Irish time. So we'll get things started. So everybody, thanks so much for joining today. Great to have you with us um, to do a little workshop on how to save your APIs from Doom with SmartBear. Uh, my name is Joe Joyce. I'm a solutions engineer um, with SmartBear. So solutions engineer, I do a lot of demos, um, show customers our tools, support um, with POCs, that kind of a thing, and help you know, smart pair customers figure out um, which one of our solutions is right for them. So that's, my, that's a little bit about me. Um, and today we're going to talk about API design, RESTful API design, and we're going to talk about RESTful API testing. But we're going to try and make it a little bit more, a little bit more fun than maybe that sounds um, by, by bringing in the help of a project, an open source project called RESTful, uh, RESTful Doom. So for a little bit of context, um, first of all, and, and credit where credit is due. So if you Google uh, RESTful Doom, 
uh, you'll find a couple of links to a project by a developer called uh, Jeff Harris. Uh, and what Jeff Harris did was he took, uh, so Chocolate Doom was the original project, which was kind of an open source Doom deployment. And Doom, I suppose, for even more context, I'm assuming that everybody is uh, as geeky as I am here, but Doom is, of course, referring to the classic first person shooter game, Doom. And what Jeff Harris did was he took uh, this Chocolate Doom open source game engine and he built uh, a RESTful API server uh, within the game in C. Um, and that project is called RESTful Doom. And, and you'll find it up on GitHub, very cool project. If you wanna have a, a look around and see how we did it, um, very, very interesting. So at SmartBear, we're, we're all about APIs, we're all about RESTful APIs. And so you know, when we heard about this project, we thought it sounded very interesting. So. We've run a couple of workshops over the last year or two where uh, we've challenged teams to try and beat the first level of Doom using this API version of, uh, of the game, right? So uh, we end up getting very interesting potential solutions where teams have created SDKs or come up with uh, interesting kind of automations around um, the, you know, the RESTful API within Doom to try and beat the level as fast as possible. So that's kind of the, the context behind today's session. That's the project that I'll be using and I'll be testing against. Um, and the two SmartBear solutions that we're talking about today are, are Swagger Hub and Ready API. Um, so Swagger Hub and Ready API quite often fit into, um, and this is, the, this is the one and only slide, don't worry. Um, what, so Swagger Hub and Ready API often fit into what we would call uh, a design first uh, workflow for API development. Um, and a design first workflow, as the name suggests, is a workflow where when a new requirement for an API comes up, the first port of call is the design. So, you know, we need to, you know, teams get together and write the API design and sign off on that before implementation. And there's a lot of advantages with that, right? And this deck that I'm just, or this slide that I'm going through here is showing an example of what that workflow often looks like, where teams will get together on Swagger Hub first of all, and go through a collaboration cycle and design the API there, sign off on the version of the API definition everybody is happy with, which for Swagger Hub APIs, as we'll see in a little uh, in a little bit, these are JSON uh, or YAML files um, that are open API definitions. And you can take that definition and do a lot of interesting things with it. You can generate code from it, you can generate test cases from it, and you can use definitions uh, from Swagger Hub to keep production systems up to date with changes to the definition. So specifics aside, you know, the, the kind of thesis of, of this workshop is regardless of the tools or the approaches or the solutions that you use to do it, if you're building APIs and you're testing APIs, having a solid definition that has been collaborated on by the relevant people and then making that definition available to testers, regardless of how you do that, you're really increasing your chances of ending up with an API in production, releasing it to your customers that they're you know, actually going to enjoy using and not struggle to use. And I suppose to tie this in with the title of the, the workshop, you know, API Doom really is a scenario where your APIs aren't being adopted, right? where you, know, you, you go through all the trouble of implementing them and releasing them, but because of bad documentation or because of poor functionality, they just don't end up getting adopted. And, you know, they end up going to the API graveyard, never being never being really used until the next time a you know a new iteration of it is needed, and someone has to dive into the the code and figure out what was going on in the first place. So, to avoid that, if you have an API design that is worked on by all the relevant people and made available to the relevant teams, you're going to give yourself the best chance possible of saving your APIs from doom, and that's that's what we call a, a seamless a seamless link. <laughs> So to get down to the specifics. So first first and foremost, right? Let's we'll get the interesting stuff onto the screen. So I mentioned Doom and here is RESTful Doom running on my local machine. So the cool thing about RESTful Doom is we can play it the, you know, we can play it the normal way play it using the, the keyboard, using the usual controls. And don't worry, I'm not just going to uh, 
Although we could, might just uh, sit here and play Doom for the next half an hour if I get sidetracked. <laughs> You'll have to believe me because I can't turn my uh, my camera down. But right now I'm, you know, I'm using my keyboard, so I'm playing the game, um, you know, in the kind of, let's say, the traditional, <laughs> the traditional way. But running in the background of this application, you know, thanks to Jeff Harris and you know Chocolate Doom and the underlying code and projects, there's a RESTful API um, that I can use to control my character um, and to, you know, to get through the game. So two things to, to consider about that, you know, that RESTful API. Number one, it has an API definition that I can see on Swagger Hub and review on Swagger Hub. So Swagger Hub is a smart bear solution for API design and development. Um, Swagger Hub, in a nutshell, is a repository for your RESTful API definitions where all of the teams and all of the people who need to contribute to the writing of the definition and the creation of the design of the API can get together and you know write the relevant code, which in this case is the YAML, that is my open API definition file, leave comments for each other, suggest changes, view the generated documentation. So amongst other things, you know, what Swagger Hub does is it will generate documentation for you um, so that you don't necessarily have to have two parallel workflows where someone's writing the technical definition and someone's writing the documentation. Um, what we're looking at here then is the open API definition for RESTful Doom. So you can see, you know, straight from the off, even if you'd never dealt with the open API spec before, which is an API, a RESTful API definition format, if you'd never dealt with that before, you'd probably be able to infer what's what's going on here. So, you know, you can see the different types of HTTP actions and requests that, you know, we can use to interact with the API. Um, so we can, you know, do things to our player and query the player, see what they're doing. Uh, we can make the player do some actions. So there's a post request that you can send to the API to do things like shoot, move forward, move backward, you know, turn left, turn right, and to use the items in the game. So in a sense, exactly what an API is supposed to do. It's another interface into the functionality of the application. Um, except, you know, instead of uh, maybe the traditional applications that we would consider using RESTful APIs for, you know, we've got Doom running at the, at the back end of this, which is a little bit more fun maybe than the, the standard applications of RESTful APIs that we all, we all work with. Um, but the same, um, you know, kind of the same ideas, the same concepts, underlie writing an API definition for a game like, like Doom as it would for any kind of, you know, any kind of API. So the benefit of Swagger Hub in this case is that if we were doing design first, right, let's hypothetically imagine a scenario where, you know, the developers of RESTful Doom were starting with the definition, right? So maybe they didn't jump straight into the, the code and start building out the logic of the API itself and, and, and inserting that into the game perhaps they started with the definition. So Swagger Hub would be the platform in that example where you know, teams and designers will get together and using the open API specification, write the design. And the idea with that is that you know, before any developers have written a single line of code or you know, kind of crucially to our session today, before any developers or any testers have written any test cases, there's a, a definition, right? There's a specification of what the expectation of the API is going to be. We know what kind of operations it's going to expose. We know what kind of models it's going to expose. Um, and we know, we understand how to work with it, right? Using the documentation, we can see these are the types of parameters I would need to you know, provide um, and understand various things about the API upfront, right? Which ideally, you know, and if I pull back that slide we looked at earlier, you know, it's gonna be, there's advantages to being able to do those things right, in terms of collaborate and, you know, understand the design, there's advantages to being able to do that over here, as opposed to doing it maybe here, right? So if you decide that maybe we need a different type of parameter or a different type of functionality, you know, uh, intuitively, we all know that's going to be more difficult and more expensive to do over here than it is going to be to do over here, right, in a few lines of YAML in a design, rather than over here, once the logic has been built into the API. So that's one of you know many ways to kind of think about this and, and why we would want to start with an API design. Um, so how does that, you know, how does that kind of relate to right testing and actually working with the application, right? So if we have we have our design, we have our API definition, 
how can we actually start working with you know how can we start working with doom through the api so so this is ready api which is the second solution that that i'll be using um you know during the workshop today and if swagger hub is for you know design and collaboration ready api is a little bit more about you know working with the application right whether it's uh, testing you know functional testing or performance testing uh, or creating a virtualized version of the application um, to test right so ready api is smartbear's api readiness platform and it's really three there's really three components to it so you have ready api test which is for functional and security tests ready api performance for load testing ready api virtualization for creating virtual services and the idea is that within a ready api project you have all of the assets you have all of the test cases security tests performance tests that you would need to have confidence when you release your api but you know quite importantly as well it's a it's a client right so we can actually use this to you know interact with doom and work with our application so i'll just quit this and pull it back up We'll go for, yeah, we'll go for I'm too young to die. Why not? I feel like I am anyway. So we might lose the Doom screen for a second while I'm while I'm double, you know, pulling up the two applications. But with a Ready API project, within a functional test, right, you have your test suites. And within your test suite, you have all of your test cases. And in this example, I've created this project by importing my API definition. So the connection between my test project and my API design is quite is quite tight. All right, so I can create a new project in Ready API by importing a definition from Swagger Hub. And the benefit of that is that if I have, you know, if we've all collaborated on the API design in Swagger Hub and agreed on the functionality of the API and you know put all that work in to the left of the lifecycle then that definition is now going to be extremely useful to someone who needs to actually test the API because within that definition, you've got um, you know, the scope of all the operations that you're gonna use, um, the you know, parameters that you'll need to provide. You've got all kinds of information that are gonna be useful to, um, you know, to it from a tester perspective. So in this case, those requests just happen to be interacting with my Doom application. So my Doom, application is running on my local host at the moment. And you know this action, for example, is gonna move the player forward, right? So my payload is the action that we saw earlier in the Swagger Hub request in my API design documentation. So I can provide the payload to move my character forward, send that and move our man through the game. So let me just try and set this up so that we can see both at the same time. Oh, it's a little bit more interesting. All right, so hopefully we can see that. So I can start sending my requests from Ready API and moving my player through Doom. So if you can imagine now, when we were doing this in person back, uh, you know, we won't mention the we won't mention the pandemic, but it's impossible not to mention the pandemic. But back when <laughs> gatherings were allowed. We had a workshop where we got developers and testers together and everybody set this up in their own environment and use various ways, whether it was with Ready API or whether it was generating an SDK and building it out programmatically to try and get through the first level as quick as possible. So generally what that looked like was kind of a discovery phase like this where, you know, kind of through trial and error, you'd see how many moves you needed to, you know, get to certain parts of the level. So generally would start with a, a kind of, you know, a kind of slow and steady process of understanding how the calls work, how that relates to the game. And now in this case, let's put my money where my mouth is and see if I can deal with this gentleman. We'll leave that door closed for a second. If he lines up, yes, excellent. Death by RESTful API. So. The players that we had um, in our, you know, in our live events, everyone had this set up on their own environment, and we're trying to come up with a project that would, you know, get through that level as 
as quickly as possible. Um, and it was a lot of fun. So I would genuinely recommend if you're if you're the curious type, you know, definitely take a look at the project. Um, you know, pull that down. You can compile it locally um, and start to play around with it. You know, however you're sending your API request. So it is it is kind of an interesting. Uh, it's a very interesting project. Um, so maybe just to call out a few things related to Ready API and Swagger Hub, right? So when we talk about the the relationship between these two solutions and like why why is it better for um, you know, why would a tester want to have an API design or want to have an API definition? And there's a few, there's a few reasons that that makes your job a little bit easier. Um, obviously, in this case, using Ready API and Swagger Hub. Like if you have, and we'll just open up a different project here for a second. If you have an API definition and that definition is the, you know, kind of source of truth or the contract for the application's eventual, you know, functionality, then from a testing perspective, that's going to help you do a few things. One thing it can do, you know, as you're probably aware of is you can use an API definition as a way to get your project coverage, right? So that if your RESTful API definition is, in a sense, the entire functionality of the API, right? The, de the definition is telling you the scope of the operations, the scope of what the application is eventually going to do, the API is eventually going to do, then it, as a tester, you know, you know, this is what you need to test and anything outside of that is essentially out of scope for the test. So from a kind of practical perspective, what Ready API lets you do is generate a project coverage report from your API definition. So that if you know you want to make sure that, you know, in this case, in this test or this test suite, I've got three different test cases, I can run that test suite and see pretty quickly, you know, how much of the contract have I covered. Um, and it kind of, you know, obviously there's there's a, there's different terminology that can be used to describe these things, but contract driven testing and contract first testing is is becoming um, or, or has become quite a popular approach to testing APIs where the definition or the design is viewed as a contract in the relationship between, you know, the consumers and the providers of the API. And, you know, as with a real, you know, kind of paper contract, that contract can't be broken or shouldn't be broken. Or if it is, someone needs to do, you know, something, whether it's on the dev side or on the test side. So I, I think that's, you know, and from, you know, to tie it back to what I'm doing every day is talking to teams and looking at their, you know, current workflows and talking about their, you know, possible future workflows. I think that is striking teams is quite a useful thing to do is that, you know, from a testing perspective, I, I'm not sure I'd like to test an API from a team that are developing it if they're not confident enough in what the API is going to do, then to put it in a definition, put it in a some kind of schema. So that if I have that information, it makes my job much more straightforward because you know, if the people building the API know what the scope of it is, from my perspective, that makes it much easier to test. And from a, you know, you can take that one step backwards and then, you know, from a designer perspective, if we move back into Swagger Hub, you know, what we're seeing is a lot of teams using Swagger Hub will bring their testers into the Swagger Hub organization, right? So that, you know, an API designer is obviously a broad term, right? So who is an API designer? Who gets to contribute to that process? And different teams will have different thoughts and, and approaches to that. but I think there's a very strong argument to be made for bringing the testers into the design phase so that you know the API is testable by design right because a measure of a you know good or or good quality application is testability right so if the definition or the design is um the starting point for our application we want to make sure that the design is testable so from you know the point of view of a tester who's working in swagger hub you can take a look at different operations and understand how they relate to each other you know, what data is required. There's also a, an auto mocking integration in Swagger Hub. So, you know, amongst the other functionalities or amongst the other things that Swagger Hub can do, and um, there's several integrations that you can apply to your APIs. One of them is auto mocking and no prizes for guessing what, what that does. It does what it says in the tin. It, it creates a, a mock of your API based off the information here in the definition. And that's done automatically. So, if you describe an operation in your YAML that has you know, several possible responses, auto mocking is gonna generate a mock server that will re return at the 200 response for that endpoint. So it's a way of you know, whether you're from a kind of client or consumer perspective or from a tester's perspective, it's a way of seeing what the API is gonna do before it's developed, right? Which again, if we put ourselves in the role of the tester, that's a very useful thing to be able to do especially before implementation is done, right? And to kind of link that to 
you know, Ready API, once we're at this stage of the project or of the, the sprint or whatever workflow you're working in, in Ready API, Swagger Hub, importing a definition from Swagger Hub is one way to create a, de or to create a project. You can also create from an endpoint. So you know, imagine a scenario where the testing team only gets access to an API when there are endpoints available, right? So the implication being that some implementation or development has already been done, which is fine. And, and quite often that's unavoidable. That's just the reality of it. Um, you know, everybody's under time constraints. Um, but you know, from a tester's perspective, if you end up you know, finding issues or bugs with an API and there's already some implementation and development done and the endpoints are available, then it's gonna be a little, more, a little bit more difficult for those issues to be fixed um, you know, kind of in, in time for release. So from a tester's perspective, if I could test definition or test the design, that's gonna potentially make things a lot, you know, run a lot faster. And with Ready API, what you can do is create virtualized versions of the API itself. So in this case, the test that I ran a second ago was running against um, a virtualized API, which has just come from the same definition that was in Swagger Hub. So I can import an open API definition and create a fairly intelligent API using Ready API, meaning that I'm configuring dispatch style, which is just the behavior. How does the mock API choose a response? And then the responses themselves, you know, depending on how detailed your definition is, are coming from the API definition. So, you know, the kind of, again, the idea is the more detail that you get into your API definition up front, the quicker you're going to be able to do things once we're in this situation or this step of the process. And to you know, maybe zoom back up a couple of levels, you know, to take it from the workflow perspective. Everything that I'm talking about in this workshop is very much relating to these two steps of the flow. So our green box and our yellow box there. So if we say here at the green tick, API design signed off, ready to go, what happens next? You know, one branch there is it goes to development, it goes to be built. Another branch there is it goes to test. And you know, this is just one example of what the workflow could look like. You might even have a situation where the yellow testing phase comes before implementation. So the definition goes from Swagger Hub into Ready API. We create a virtual service out of that definition, which from the test's perspective is what the API is going to do once it's implemented. So the testers can write their tests against the mock service. Um, and then they have their tests to you know, go to development and say, okay, these are the tests that you need the API to pass, build us an API that passes these tests. So test-driven development, that's one potential use case for uh, Swagger Hub and Ready API in this type of a workflow, where you know, before a single line of implementation code has been written, we have our test suites, we have our pass and fail criteria, we know what the API needs to do so that by the time we get you know, over to here, by the time we get to closer to the customer impacting portion of our workflow. From a tester's perspective, we might only have to, you know, point our tests from the mock environment to the real environment, right? And we already have them, uh, we already have them completed. Um, and it's just a case of, you know, running the tests against them. Like, as, as you can imagine, I'm sure a lot of you, if you're working in development or test are in the same situation a lot of the time where I've talked to teams who, I've talked to API testing teams who will only get access to the API maybe 48 hours before release, right? And by then, th there's only so much testing you can do, right? There's only so much you can contribute if that's the point where you're entering the workflow as a tester. So with this type of an approach, you know, again, regardless of how you do it, but Swagger Hub and Ready API, the connection between the design work and the testing work can be pretty tightly coupled. And Philippe has asked a, a good question there. Is Swagger Hub and Ready API tightly coupled? Can each of them be used easily with other tools? So the answer is kind of yes to both, right? In, in that, you know, it's it is possible and intended that, you know, you can use your Swagger Hub definitions as the creation point for your tests in Ready API. So you're just importing them, you know, importing different versions of them, and then if they change, it's quite straightforward to refactor and update definitions as well. So that's that's certainly a workflow that's you know built into Swagger Hub and Ready API, but at the same time, you know, that's one advantage of the open API spec is even if you're using Swagger Hub to write your open API definitions, there's a lot of tools and there's a lot of ways that you can take an open API definition and you know spin up test cases, create a mock. There's many ways to do it. So like 
as you said, depending on, you know, depending on the team, depending on the preference, um, Ready API and Swagger Hub can be used in quite a tightly coupled way, uh, or they can be used separately and, and frequently do get used in, in those type of ways also. But to return to Doom, we'll get back to Doom. So <clears throat> the project that I was working in um, a second ago was, or, or for the, you know, up to now, was called the, the Doom API project. I also have data-driven Doom, um, which is a nice, nice alliterative effect. And this is an example of one of the, the winning the winning entries to uh, to our workshop that we ran um, that we ran last year, right? In the sense that you know this is an example of one of the, uh, and this is me controlling Doom now, just to get to the end of the the level. But data driven Doom was a good example of a a Ready API project to beat the game that uses a lot of the kind of key Ready API functionalities, right? One one in particular, right, being data driven testing, um, you know, and I'm sure we're probably all you know, pretty familiar with data-driven testing, but the idea being that you know you want test cases that are you know easy to connect to realistic test data, right? Whether that's connecting to a database or whether that is you know an Excel file or a JSON file, wherever your test data happens to be, right? We want to make that as as easy as possible, and that's that's something that is you know kind of built into um, Ready API. I'm a little bit lost here. Where am I going? We have actually managed to go back to the start of the level, which is not a good sign. As you can probably guess, I was not on the winning team um, of our hackathon. But data-driven Doom from a Ready API perspective, <clears throat> there's a few things going on here. Um, so the test case starts off um, by you know basically choosing the map, right? Choosing the level. Then you have test steps in Ready API, and test steps, <clears throat> excuse me are the building blocks of your test cases. So if you right click on a test case in Ready API, you're gonna see all of your possible test steps. And Ready API, it, it, it does have a pretty gentle learning curve. So, you know, I've worked with teams who are coming from a manual testing background who got ramped up on API testing quite quickly with Ready API because your test steps are there. It's quite a visual tool, right? As you can obviously see, looking at my screen here, it's not something that you necessarily have to spend too much time writing scripts with or dealing with code. You can build your functional test cases, you know, using these building blocks, using these test steps, um, and you'll see, you know, there's a few different types of request steps. Uh, there's data source steps, which obviously will come in handy in a second for this, you know, particular solution. Um, but on the other hand, you know, on the other side of that, if you need your tests to do something that's a little bit more out of the box. GroovyScript and JavaScript are both supported, so you can add scripts at different, you know, uh, points in your project, either as a test step or, you know, a setup script, a teardown script, you know, wherever you need to add them. So there's room, there's really room for, um, you know, for both types of users in in Ready API. Um, so in this case, we have, you know, our first test step chooses the map. Then we have a delay, which you'll see why that's needed in a second. Then <laughs> this is a this is a clever one because um, there's a couple of essentially kind of uh, you know cheats that you can use through the API calls to do things like um, you know make your player invincible or you know turn off damage that kind of thing which which was a which was a good find and obviously helps in terms of if speed is the name of the game we're not necessarily too worried about uh, you know killing enemies and, and picking up loot and that type of a thing um, now the data source in this case is the is the kind of was the key to uh, you know a successful data-driven um, Doom project because, as you probably guessed or as you probably could infer from you know the way that we were working with the application here, right? It's that you know there's quite a lot of API calls needed to successfully navigate the the level, right? So you're going to be you know sending several calls to turn all the way right, several calls to turn all the way left, shooting that type of thing. And you know this is a scenario that we'll frequently encounter testing APIs as well, where you know there might be one API call or, or two or three API calls, but depending on the usage of the application, they might get called in different orders, or the you know parameter values will change. 
Um, so we might end up needing to send the requests, you know, dozens or hundreds or however many times during test execution. So to make that you know more straightforward, so we don't have to have a lot of repetition, that's where data sources can be useful in Ready API. Because in this case, the data source contains, as as you can, you know, I'm sure a lot of you have probably already guessed. So the payload, so we can data drive the the action that the player is going to do. Um, meaning that, so you can see here. So instead of having, you know, you can imagine maybe a more, uh, you know, a kind of more basic, uh, you know, RESTful Doom project where you had, you know, move forward, move forward, move forward, turn right, turn right, turn right. And you had a lot of repetition, a lot of calls that were essentially the same other than the payload. So what this user did is created a data source, which is just a text file and created a property for the values in that text file. And what that does is, I'll just pull it up for a second. So it just looks like this. So you got your notepad file with all of your moves, right? So simple, but in the end, very effective because it means you're not sending a lot of different requests that are essentially the same. Um, and how that works within Ready API is it uses property expansion. Uh, and what that means is that, you know, a request that is not using property expansion will have a payload like this. A request that is using property expansion will have a payload like this, right? And that's done by, if you right click on uh, a parameter or a field in, um, in Ready API, if you see get data, that means that you can parameterize that value. It means that you can take a value from somewhere else in the project, you know, it could be a field, you know, it could be a username, password, in this case, action for our Doom character, um, and use that in the payload, right? So in this case, that's coming from the data source. So it's just like a variable, action variable that we're putting into our data source. And that just means that instead of dozens of these fairly similar requests, we just have one, right? But it's going through a loop. So this is key. If I go back up to the test case level here, you can see a high level flow of what the project will look like, uh, or this test case will look like on execution. And we have a loop going back to the API action. And that loop is going to iterate for as many times as there is a new action um, in the file, in the text file. Um, which means, so I'll close that and I'll start up another game so we can see what that actually looks like. A couple of questions. Again, yeah, like if there are any questions at all, by all means, fire them into the chat. Um, LEL has asked, in Ready API, is it possible to execute requests in succession and maybe save that set of requests as a group or test case? So I, I'd imagine I've probably answered that question through what I've gone through here. The short answer is yes, um, is that you could have you could have a test case with you know several different API calls in it. Um, quite often, you might do that for common user scenarios, you know, log in, log out, that type of thing, and store that as you know a kind of master test request and then that will get called by other test requests. That's one way to do it. Um, does Ready API support other formats apart from REST? Yes, it does. And um, so if we go into add step, you can see a couple of the other API protocols that Ready API supports. So even though Swagger Hub obviously is very much built around the open API spec, which is RESTful, um, Ready API can test you know, more than just REST API. So it kind of goes back to Philippe's question earlier, which was, you know, uh, can Ready API and Swagger Hub be tightly coupled or loosely coupled? And you know it can be both because you could use Ready API to test a variety of services, right? GraphQL, SOAP, XML, RPC. You know Ready API can test databases as well. There's a JDBC request in there that can do that. So um, it is it is quite flexible in terms of the types of, of services that you'll be testing. Um, so without further ado, let's get another session of Doom going. And let's see how this looks in practice. So knee deep in the dead, and I'm definitely still too young to die. Let's kick it off. And I'm just checking to see what everyone in the audience can see as well. Very good. We've got what I can see. So what you can see now is why the delays are important as well, because some stages the character might get stuck somewhere or need to adjust. We're making our way through. Bit of a strafe there. 
And you can see as that's happening, you can see what, you know, the Ready API side, what that looks like from a kind of test execution perspective is that right now we're, you know, we've been going through the loop for the last while, right? And that will stop once we get to the end of the text file with the, the actions in there, right? So that, that kind of, that should probably explain why, you know, if you picture, picture a room full of people with different teams at different tables, you know, all trying to work towards something like this, the kind of first maybe 20 minutes or half an hour for each team kind of looked like your discovery phase where they were, you know, kind of going through, um, going through the API. What's happened here? Well, we're getting a pass in Ready API, but this is not looking good. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't look like a successful run through the level for me. <laughs> RIP my Doom character. Well, <laughs> it happens to the best of us. I suppose you'll, you'll have to take my word for it. <laughs> in, that, um, in my executions of the test case before before our session today, that was uh, we were successfully getting through <laughs> getting through the level, but it seems like we've run into some issues with that particular run. Might be because I touched the keyboard. So we'll let that run again in the background there. <laughs> in the meantime, well, that's running again and hopefully succeeding. Uh, give me one second. I'm kind of, I'm gonna be stubborn about this now and we'll try and get that working properly. So we're gonna finish that execution. Okay, we're gonna start a new game. I'm too young to die. All right, and let's go. I think it's because I did click and I think that moved the character. So I'm gonna to touch that and hands off. And in the meantime, no hands. So just in case, just in case anybody doubted me, I am not touching the keyboard. Um, so Raphael asked the question, is there any headless mode so it could be integrated in CI CD? Yes, there is. So um, with, with Ready API, there's a utility called Test Runner. Um, and I'll show you in a second, once we fingers crossed, make it out of Doom Alive this time, um, but there is a utility in Ready API called Test Runner, and what that does is exactly what you said. Um, I'll show you in a second. But you you'll right click on a test suite or a test case or you know whatever particular uh, you know part of your project that you need to execute in a CI/CD pipeline. You'll right click on it. You'll run Test Runner, and what Test Runner does is generate a command line version of the test for you. And you know you might put that into a Jenkins job. You might put that into a GitHub action. Um, no, not good. Looks like it wasn't because I touched the keyboard. Okay, well in that case, the gauntlet the gauntlet has been laid down. If anybody is feeling uh, ambitious or creative and wants to have a go at this themselves, because <clears throat> you'll have to take my word for it. <laughs> this was this was making this was getting me through the level um, about an hour ago, but I suppose. It's always the way, isn't it? Um, but if anybody does fancy their chances at doing a, a, a slightly better job than I've done here of making it through Doom using the RESTful API, um, I'll, well, well, RIP is right, yeah. <laughs> Not good. That's kind of how I felt. Uh, that's kind of how I felt all the time this year, <laughs> as I'm sure we all did. Um, <laughs> but I'll pull up Ready API here for a second. And what I was talking about there was, was Test Runner. Um, and test runner is George, brave effort. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. God loves a trier. Um, is this <laughs> so? Get command line. So this is kind of the you know the kind of foundation of how you would go about uh, automating these tests, right? So I'll just pull over um, a Jenkins job very quickly if I have one set up. No, I don't believe I do. But what you would do is you know take this and add that as a build step in a Jenkins job, for example, or like I said before, maybe a GitHub action. So quite frequently, teams that use Ready API will, like the usage model generally looks something like, you know, you might have, let's say four testers working with Ready API though locally, writing their tests, writing their projects, and you can share your test case project files uh, in a GitHub repository. So there's several integrations. One of them is with Git. Um, so the deployment or the collaboration model tends to look like that where you will connect to a GitHub repository and save all of the test case files there. They're just XML files, you know, the files themselves. Um, so if you picture in your head four, you know, Ready API instances, all collecting, connecting to one GitHub repository and storing and sharing projects there. 
And then you might have a CI CD pipeline that's also hooking into the pipe or also hooking into the repository. Um, and when the pipeline needs to execute tests, you know, it'll pull the test cases from the pipeline um, and you know, run what it needs to run. So that's a, a pretty common um, you know, deployment model for uh, for ready API tests in, in that type of fashion. Um, so we're kind of coming up to it's half past two on this side. So I believe we have I have about 10 minutes left with you all. So by all means, if anybody does have any burning questions, uh, pop them into the chat. And what I will also do is if anybody would, like I said, like to have a go themselves, I'm going to send you a link to uh, Jeff Harris's GitHub repo. Again, all credit to the man himself for putting it together. And it's a, you know, if nothing else, it's a very interesting, it's an interesting little project, and it's an interesting story about how he came to, um, you know, uh, about how he came to, you know, have the idea for the project and. You know, there's more technical detail in there about how he actually, you know, built the HTTP server in C inside the Doom engine and how he got that server code running within the loop. So um, it's a cool story, cool project. Um, and like I said, if anybody wants to have a go at getting through the level a little bit faster than I did and without dying, crucially, that tends to be a key uh, success criteria <laughs> for, for a Doom run. Um, what are you excited about coming down the pipe from Smart Bear? Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I what kind of gets me excited about Smart Bear. Um, you know, in a general sense, is what I like about Smart Bear and what I like about the way that we work with our customers, and particularly from you know the team that I'm on, the SE team is, you know, I think that the the term solutions engineer is appropriate for us because you know on the one hand it's not necessarily just about trying to let's try and get the tools in place on these teams, you know come hell or high water. Like Smart Bear is all about trying to figure out what the actual best solution is, right, for a, a given team in a given scenario. So that communication between, you know, between us and the teams that we're talking to, it's very open. It's very kind of genuine. And you know, it's not just about let's get the tool in place and move on. We do generally end up having quite interesting conversations and building interesting relationships with teams that are using our technology to you know, to do really interesting things. Um, and I think that's, you know, maybe without being too broad, but I think that's kind of what I enjoy the most about the work that we do and what I'm excited about, you know, over the coming 12 months is seeing, you know, the results of those projects and seeing new projects like that come up with our clients who are, you know, who are using our solutions to, to do a variety of things. Because, you know, even, you know, RESTful Doom is a good example of, you know, maybe an, a slightly more unexpected application of a RESTful API, something you wouldn't necessarily expect to see a RESTful API being used for. Um, you know, and we we end up encountering things like that all the time, you know, from our customers, right? Is, you know, I've been demoing these tools and talking about these tools for, for nearly three years now. And, you know, there's nearly, there's always, there's always an, a, a use case that you didn't expect, or there's always a, you know, a, a project that takes you by surprise a little bit, which is interesting, right? It just keeps things, it keeps things interesting. Um, so yeah, I hope that was uh, I hope it wasn't too waffly an answer, George. What am I what am I excited about? Hopefully that um it's an honest answer anyway. Um so but keep the questions coming. I know we have a few minutes left. Um and they you know they can be general or specific. If you want to hop back, you know, if you want us to hop back into Swagger Hub and talk more about the design side, by all means ask away. And you know, again, if anybody wants to learn more or anything along those lines. You know, by all means, get in touch. Um, we're always open to having a, you know, a kind of more detailed conversation about any one of these these solutions. How do, another question from George? George, keep keep me on my toes. How do you feel about API audience being the develop being developer centric now, but is it inevitable the citizen developer will become the majority? Is it inevitable? Um, I don't know if it's inevitable. And if I'm interpreting the question correctly, let me know if I'm not. Um, it, it sounds to me like the question is, you know, how, how does it, you know, does our API audiences, whatever that, you know, term, whatever you take that to mean, are, is an API audience always going to be 
mostly developers, right? Or developer centric. Um, if 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 I'm yeah, correct. Okay, good stuff. <laughs> I died. I died in Doom, but I, it sounds like I'm understanding the questions correctly. Um, so that's good. I think you're right in that. Yes, like from what I've seen, going to conferences, giving talks, you know, even in you know, in a general sense, you, you have API conferences and kind of testing conferences, generally speaking. But for, probably right now today, it's still true that the API audience tends to be more kind of developer centric. Maybe on a day-to-day -day basis, in terms of conversations that I'm having with individual customers, maybe at the more micro level, it does seem to be starting to open up a little bit. In my view, right? Obviously, that's just my opinion, but from from what I've seen, it seems that as API like programs within organizations mature, there looks to be an effort with companies and organizations to bring more personas into the API group, right? In a very broad sense, so testers. You know, business analysts, architects, that that type of thing, um, which is, I think, you know, overall, I think it's a good thing, right? Because, you know, in a very general sense, obviously, all software development is is technical, right? But you know, API development, you know, uh, I suppose, and it, it kind of gets viewed as even more technical in some ways, right? Maybe you'd agree, maybe you disagree, but in a in a general sense, but I think it makes sense to be able to get more eyes on APIs and and kind of view. The business value of them as well as the scenario that i mentioned earlier right trying to get a tester writing the design so that the api is testable by design and um, so i think yeah i think you're right i agree with you george that right now it's probably at the macro level the api audience tends to be more developer centric but from from my kind of day-to-day -day conversations it seems that slowly but surely you know organizations are seeing the value of getting more you know types of personas involved in the process, right? Namely, you know, testers, uh, business analysts, because at the end of the day, you know, obviously an API is a technical product, but it's still, depending on your business model, you know, you could still view it as a, as a product or a service, right? So it makes sense to get those kind of eyes on it as well. Um, but no, very good question. Um, uh, Dimitri, what is your suggestion about API versioning? That's, and again, in my experience, that's, and it's not a dummy question at all because that's like, it's a very good question and it's a very, it's a difficult question. And without sounding like too much of a cop out, it's a difficult question for me to answer without knowing a little bit more um, about, you know, about your, your APIs and your workflows and your processes, right? Because from what I found, specifically in conversations that usually involve Swagger Hub, you know, obviously at a very basic, you know, at a very kind of simple sense, you can version your APIs in Swagger Hub, but how those versions of your API definitions and versions of your APIs relate to the versions of the underlying microservice, if that's the case, or, you know, there's, there's a lot of threads you, you could kind of pull out there to reach a conclusion of how you should version your APIs, you know, versus how you should version your API definitions versus versus how you version the microservice. So I would say definitely not a dummy question, but I would, I'd be more than happy to, you know, if, if, and, and similar, same goes for everybody. If there's any questions like that, that might end up, you know, needing kind of, you know, a kind of longer form conversation, um, you know, more than happy to, to schedule something like that, whether it's a demo or a call, you can find me on LinkedIn, find me on the, the speakers list and, and we can set something up if that's the case. Um, George Jeffcock says, Swagger Hub rocks. Thanks for answering my question. Thank you, George. Swagger Hub rocks, even if my my attempt <laughs> at Doom uh, did not rock. So um, I think I've gone, we're almost at the top of my time. Um, so I'll, I'll leave you with that kind of ominous, <laughs> that very ominous image on the screen of the um, of that, that monster walking towards me. Um, so in summary, <laughs> we don't want our APIs to end up here. How do we avoid that? We avoid that by investing time in a good API design and a robust API design, and then ensuring that our workflow is set up in such a way that all of the relevant stakeholders can make use of that. And hopefully, that's that's not too much of a of a of a of a a, a jump um, from the title to the <laughs> to the summary. But like I said, everyone, thanks thanks so much for um, for joining. Um, you know, we had plenty of questions and a good bit of back and forth, and that's always good. That makes that makes these sessions, um, you know, much more much more productive, much more fun. Um, so yeah, 
thanks thanks everybody for joining um any any questions um if anybody wants to take the conversation a little bit further in any direction by all means uh get in touch um, and we can take it from there so aside from that enjoy the rest of api days paris um, and we'll talk to you all soon bye for now